Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello, my people. It's nice to welcome you to this exciting moment with an exciting message, a message of joy, a message of thanksgiving to God for what God has done and is still doing for us. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for giving us the Lord Jesus to be born into our world, to transform the world for good, to draw us to yourself and make us your children. And so, Lord, as we celebrate Christmas, May we celebrate Jesus Christ in our lives, individually and collectively. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today is um, the 23rd day of December. Welcome to 2023 Christmas celebration, which is around the corner. The lovely wind of Christmas is blowing around the world, exciting many lives. The scripture passage for us to meditate upon us, upon us, is um, Matthew chap chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, which tells of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem of Judea, when Herod was king. That was prophesied by Micah before the birth. And I read, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Who will not be troubled? And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me. I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. Till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the child, they rejoiced exceedingly with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream, that they will not return to Herod. They departed for their own country 
another way. Let us stop at verse 12. The message here is simple, straightforward. It is a common knowledge that the birth of Jesus is celebrated in many parts of the world by Christians and even non-Christians. The birth of Christ is one event that changed the world for good. His birth marked a new beginning for a number of things. His birth was a fulfillment, in fulfillment of prophecies concerning his birth, as recorded in the Old Testament scriptures. We have just read one here, as written by a prophet. A number of prophets prophesied that somebody will be born, a Messiah will be born, a Messiah will come to liberate his people. So his birth was in fulfillment of prophecies concerning his birth. It was not an accident. It is historic. It is not a fable. The Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, gives us different sides of his birth story, which makes it very interesting. Like the journalist today, one paper will write one thing, another will write the same story, they will write it in different ways. Telling you or showing you that they saw it from different sides. The gospel writer did not leave us in any doubt that Jesus was born. And he lived in this world. Now looking at the story, we realize that some people saw the star. The people called wise men. In those, you know, in our Bible. And they went to look for the child. And when they saw Herod the king, maybe they thought the child was born in Herod's house anyway. You know, that kind of thing should actually come from uh, the big family. <laughs> the, no, God doesn't think that way. They went to the right place anyway, but they didn't get the right answer, because that's not God's way. And when Herod heard about somebody was born, king, hmm, that's another story. He was shivering. He was disturbed. Who will not be disturbed? He was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. Eh? We have a king and another king will be born. What was his response? Ha! Ah. If you read carefully the accounts put together, you see that he even ordered the killing of all the children who were of a certain age to ensure that that child was killed. And that was why the Lord asked uh, Joseph to take his wife Mary and Jesus and uh, live for Egypt. They went to Egypt and lived there before Pharaoh did his massacre. I mean, Herod did his massacre of the little ones. And there was a lot of outcry. He thought he had eliminated the child. <laughs> but God took the child away. That's God's way. You never cheat God. You can never manipulate God. You can never arrest God. His purposes are going to be accomplished. So the child went away. Herod did his was. His response was to kill. The response of the wise men was to look for the child. And they got the child. They saw the child. They worshipped the child. They presented gifts. And when you read another version, you hear of the shepherds too. Shepherds. If you read down, you see how he massacred the people, the children. From verse 16, you see how he massacred the children in the city, looking for a way to kill. You know, let me read that quickly. Then Herod, when he saw that 
he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all his districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. You see, the atrocity he committed, that must be terrible. Killing of innocent children. That was how he responded. The wise man responded positively. He responded negatively. That's what we see all the time. When the message of Jesus is preached, the gospel of salvation is preached, people are bound to respond differently. We can draw some useful lessons for life from these Gospels, written by the Gospel writers. God's thoughts and ways are very different from ours. He uses people he wants to use, whether you are a cripple, whether you are blind, whether you are lame, whether you are short or tall, whether you are educated or not. God chooses to use you, he will use you. He can use a goat, he can use an ass, he can use a whatever. That is God's way. God uses unlikely ways and people to accomplish his purpose. For example, Jesus was born in an obscure place by an unusual family. This is another pointer that everyone is important to God. And so don't underestimate yourself or any person due to status, background, education, race, name it. Don't ever underestimate anybody because you are not God. And God doesn't underestimate anyway. He can use anybody provided that vessel is clean, is holy, God can use it for his purpose. Another lesson we can learn from here is that God declared the birth of Jesus through the prophets long before it came to pass. I mentioned that before. This is a confirmation that God's word must come true, no matter how long it takes. Believe God's word. When you read it, understand it, believe it, it must come true, no matter what. The atrocities around the world will one day end, because God has a timetable for the world. The atrocities around us will one day end, because for everything there is a time. Everything under heaven, there is a time. It will come to pass. Trust in God's word. Believe in God's word. Stop doubting. God will accomplish what he says he will do. He says what he will do, and he does what he says. Now, we hear of another point here. Is, uh, angels from heaven, from one of the Gospels, announced Jesus' birth to poor shepherds in the bush, a clad man. You need to know what it means to be a shepherd. To be in the cold, in the winter. Shepherding animals for big men and women. That was where God went, sent angels to go and announce to them the birth of the Savior of the world. Isn't that interesting? This God is interesting. Again, we see God chosen, choosing to give this important message to the poor and not to the rich. The child of the born was, went to the poor, not to the rich. The message went to the poor and not to the rich. Hmm. That's God for you. That's God for me. Another point, salient point here is that God also revealed the birth of Jesus to pagans. Pagans, all these magi or wise men may be, uh, you know, the way they were understood later. Before the birth of Christ, 
those men who were called, um, later called Magi's or wise men, were called different names, like astronomers. People who can read uh, the stars, alter prophecies, explain omens, dream dreams, among others. If you read the book of Daniel, you will see it there. There are people like that. But uh, they've been given a sort of baptismal name, wise men. Yes, they were wise in their own way. But they were pagans. They were pagans. God revealed what he wants to do to pagans so that they will know, they will accept it. And then they did. They accepted it. They worshipped him. They gave him gifts. Our God is wonderful. The number of the um, wise men, we, are, we don't know. Their nationality and country are unknown. But we can f figure out one or two things about them, which I have already said from the scriptures and from history. Question of the Magi. Where is he that is born? King of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. This is a one million dollar or naira or pound question. Where is Jesus today in our midst as we celebrate Christmas? Where do we put him? Have we seen his star? Do we believe that he was born? Do we know what he has come to do? Well, why, why he was born in the first place? Do we accept that? Or we just celebrate Christmas for celebrating an event that makes us happy? Let's try to figure out Let's try to figure out how to respond to Jesus, how to respond to this individual, one wonderful human individual that was born. Like the wise men, they responded positively. Like Herod, he res responded negatively by doing what he did. The shepherds responded positively. They went, they found the baby, they worshipped, he clad men. Yes, today, what are we doing with the celebration of Christmas? Where is Jesus in our celebration? Jesus was born to rule, and we do so forever. After his second advent, he was born to rule. That's what the Bible says. Are we ready for his rule? Are you and your family Going to celebrate 2022 Christmas with Jesus on the throne? Be sure you locate Jesus. Be sure you embrace him who is born to rule as king. Not only of the Jews, but of you and me, of you and your family. Go to church this Christmas or wherever you are. Join others in his service or Christ's mass. Worship him for his love for you, for his love for the world. Receive his peace. Receive his blessings which his birth has brought to the world and to you as an individual. As we close, we read John Chapter 3, verse 16, where the Lord Jesus himself told us what he has come to do. Listen carefully. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's Christmas message. Jesus came to give us life, everlasting life. 
Jesus came that we may not perish in our sins, but have everlasting life. What else can we say? Let us thank God and appreciate God for this wonderful gift. And so may this Christmas, 2022 Christmas, be a special one for all of us as we rediscover Jesus anew, as we respond to him positively with our whole heart, our whole soul, our whole mind, our whole spirit, our whole everything. And let our Christmas usher in peace in our family, in our neighborhood. This is a time to know Jesus, respond to him. What did he come to do? He came to bring God's love. Love came down from heaven. He came to bring God's peace. He came to bring us joy. He came to make life more abundant. He came to make us live in peace, show, know how to relate to other people. He came to bring many blessings. May we rediscover those blessings and may we embrace them and may we share them. May this Christmas be a very special one to all of us, a very special one to you listening, and a very special one to the world, beginning with this country. May this Christmas usher in something new that we never had before, even the peace of God, which Jesus represents. Because he's the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord and Father, for giving us Jesus Christ. Thank you for your time to celebrate his coming, his first advent, and a time to remind ourselves to prepare for the second advent. May we, O oh Lord, our God, be always prepared for his coming. And as we celebrate Christmas, even this year, may we celebrate it with a difference with Christ at the center. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.